Stealing focus! Greetings, Broadway babies. Or West End babies, I might say. Um, hey. No, naughty. <laughs> naughty little babies. No, no. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi. Um, it's Emily and Hi, Jeff. Jeff here. And happy 2023. Oh my God. Yeah, happy um, year. It's been a minute. <laughs> Had a lot of stuff going on in the old uh, real world, so it's nice to be... Uh, back on the YouTubes right now. Jeff and I just watched a movie musical and we wanted to talk about it. What was that movie musical, Jeff? It was called Rolled Dolls, Matilda the Musical. Yeah, it's not just Matilda, it's Rolled Dolls, Matilda the Musical because yeah. any musical adaptation of a Rolled Doll work has to have his name right at the well, top. Well, I mean, why not? It's what, it's what sells the show, basically. <laughs> yeah. That and little British kids. Yeah, little little <laughs> spunky, little angry British Triple kids. Triple threats, those Brits, I yeah, tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we're surrounded by the trifecta of spunky kid musicals. Mm -hmm. um, Oliver, Annie, and Matilda. Um, and Cursed Child, the musical, will come next. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Potter the musical. Will no, be next. no, we don't need that. We don't okay. need we don't need any more Harry Potter right, uh, right. works. That's true. Um, but uh, yeah, I guess you could throw Billy Elliot in there. But yeah, um, hell yeah, we should have Billy Elliot. Put upon put upon little. But his little mom kids. was nice though. His his mom was nice. His mom was dead. Maybe I'm thinking. Really? <laughs> I'm thinking of the movie. His mom's his dead. His mom is dead. Shit. Well, who's the who plays? Uh, well, forget it. I haven't seen it in 15 years. <laughs> Okay, so Matilda. All right, so let me tell you uh, our, I guess, our histories with it. Jeff, um, what's your history with Matilda, the, uh, the the work by Roald Dahl and any of its adaptations? I don't really have much history with it. I knew about it. I read a lot of Roald Dahl stuff growing up, but I did grow up in England, so I have a strong affinity for the countryside and the and the school uh, uniform. <laughs> what about Roald Dahl? No, I love Roald Dahl. I read <laughs> James and the Giant Peach, Charlie and Chocolate Factory. Yeah. I read a bunch of his stuff growing up. I just don't remember reading much about Matilda or reading the book or even watching the movie in the 90s. Okay, so, so Matilda... So I came at it from completely nothing, basically. Yeah. So Matilda um, was, I think, Roald Dahl's last published work. It came out in 1988, and I remember getting it because I was, like, Matilda's age. She's yeah. In the book, she's, like, five years old. Um, and they usually older up in a lot of adaptations. Yeah, so I loved the book, and uh, I was totally obsessed with it. And then um, there was the 96 film with Mara Wilson. Um, the, the little actor who said, we're his goddamn kids, we're too. We're his goddamn kids, too. We're his goddamn kids, too. So it, it was adapted by... Uh, Danny DeVito, you know, right? Because so Danny DeVito and Rhea Perlman play the awful parents, and um, yeah, he adapted it. And I remember liking the '96 film. I watched it a lot, but I remember there was a little something lost in translation because it's set in America. Oh, totally. So there's something yeah. about the, like the school Crunchum Hall is so very British, and so much about it is so very British that. Some of it didn't really translate. Um, you know, obviously the kids didn't really have, like, I don't think had school uniforms in that film. There's a common misconception that the 2022 film adaptation is an adaptation of the 96 film. Oh, no. And that is not the case. No. That is not the case. It is based on a stage show. Matilda the Musical came out um, in London, in the West End, in I think 2015. Um, it's got a nice Royal Shakespeare Company uh, logo right there. And uh, then it transferred to Broadway not long after. And um, it is an adaptation of that stage musical. And the musical is an adaptation of the book. Yeah. So the 96 film is also an adaptation of the book, but it's like its own thing. Yeah. So let's get that across. Because it's rolled doll, there's these really, there are these really um, kind of well-known plot points and tent poles that you always hit in a Matilda adaptation, like um, the Trunchbull throwing Amanda Thripp by uh, her pigtails, yeah. Bruce eating the cake, mm -hmm. and um, the chalkboard at the end. Those are all in all the different adaptations. Um, so yeah, so we just watched the 2022 film adaptation of that stage musical with music and lyrics by Tim Minchin. And I actually did see it on Broadway in 2014, I think is when I saw it. No, that can't be right. Maybe it was. It was 2014 or 2015. I saw it on Broadway and um, I went with 
Ryan Scott Oliver and Matt Murphy because our friend Leslie Margarita was playing the mom and she originated the mom on Broadway. And so we got to go backstage afterwards and it was really cool. And at this point, Chris Sieber was playing the Trunchbull. You know who Chris Sieber is? Mm. Oh, he's great. I just saw him in Company on Broadway. Um, he's been around forever. He played Rapunzel's Prince in that really bad Into the Woods revival in like the early 2000s. Yeah. He's wonderful. Oh, he was in Shrek. He was <laughs> Lord Farquaad uh, in the musical oh, of Shrek. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So I've seen the Broadway version and I'm about to direct Matilda Jr. Nice. Uh, in the spring with my middle schooler. So it's very much yeah, it's, on uh, the brain. Amazing so amazing that that's happening. Yeah. It's so, all happening at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> so we just wanted to talk about it. So yeah. what, what did you think of the movie? I, You know, I really liked the movie. Uh, I have to, like coming at it completely cold, I, I was. it took me a while to warm up to it. I was a little confused. I wasn't confused, but I wasn't in love with the way it started. I thought the parents, you know, were a little over the top. Obviously, that's the Roald Dahl thing. The Dursleys, in this case, they yeah. I, I we were talking about this right I, before we recorded. Like I remember reading Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, and going, "Wow, this has a lot of Roald Dahl in it." Because the Dursleys really reminded me of the Wormwoods in a lot of ways. Yeah. So, Joanne, not every idea she has is original. What can we say? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but makes a lot of money. Uh, no, but I uh, I did like it. Uh, there were things that I would have done differently. Obviously, that happens all the time. I love. Um, the art direction, the cinematography, and the girl who plays the lead. Wow, they were really lucky to have her. She is they so were really cute. lucky. All the kids in it are really cute. She had a cute. whole lot of responsibility to that story, including tons of monologues where she's uh, kind of telling this story. I really love the parallel stories and how her it name ties is in. Alicia Weir. And They're I, really lucky to have yeah. her because if they had if they had an actor who like was could be cutesy and like maybe sad, but didn't have a little bit more um, developed uh, emotions. She has to have acting. a little bit of an edge, and she's in, like, a horrible situation, and her spunkiness kind of, yeah. like, kind of gets you through it. Um, yeah, I'm just saying, like, I'm just saying her performance, I thought was really, really good. Yeah. And it, without that, it the... the Film would have suffered a lot, and then of course Emma Thompson has to be in it, and she has to play the horrible lady. I mean, she had to. I mean, if you can get Emma Thompson in your musical, and, I mean, playing playing an where evil is she in there? Roald Dahl can, villain. Where was she in there? Well, okay, so that's interesting that you said that. Because okay, so I have some thoughts. I overall, I really liked it. There are some changes from the stage version that I think I kind of took away some of um, what's great about the musical. Mm. So, for example, I thought the opening number, Miracle, which is usually a real powerhouse of an opening, was extremely underwhelming. So underwhelming. In the stage show, it's all the kids at, like, a birthday party. And the whole point is they're acting really bratty because that's how kids act. And they're like, like there's a little girl going, my mommy says I'm a precious ballerina and she can't, she's saying ballerina wrong. And she's like, ballerina, give me more cake. And like, they're acting really bratty. And the little boys are like, oh, my little soldier, hop to full free. And then they're singing these lyrics. You know, my mommy says I'm a miracle. And it's so bratty oh, and fun. Yeah. And then that's what makes the parents' responses going, take another picture, isn't she so cute? All that stuff. Yeah, they said it they hits a lot harder. Yeah, it didn't In really work. this, they're babies. And they have clearly like two or three-year-olds singing what the babies would be singing. So weird. And like... I get why they did it because they didn't want to show in the movie version. They didn't want to show the rest of the kids in the musical until they got to the school. But yeah. to me, it takes away what a powerhouse the opening is because then it is really funny when the mom is like, "Oh, I'm about to have a baby," and then they have her, and then she comes out, and after hearing all these like, "My mommy says I'm a miracle," with all these like horrible little children, <laughs> horrible. Um, Matilda comes out and says, "My." Daddy says I'm a I'm a useless worm, and my mommy mm. says I'm a bore. It hits a lot harder. Mm. The other thing they did, which I think takes away kind of a lot, she's supposed to have an older brother named Michael who is very dumb. He's like Dudley Dursley, and he barely says anything. He's like 
Ugh. Because a big thing is that the dad watches TV all the time. He's obsessed yeah. with telly. And he sits there with Michael and they watch telly all the time. See, I don't think the reason why they couldn't do that is because <laughs> the angle they went with these parents was so zany and so narcissistic, each of them. That but they're it like that sense. in the stage show. But it wouldn't be, make sense for them to actually be caring for another child. You know, yeah. In this version. Well, the idea is that they love Michael because he's a boy and because yeah. he's really stupid and likes TV and yeah. is barely causes a fuss. Um, it's, a, it's a questionable change. It, it kind of, it took a little something away from me. I think the movie felt like they had to because they were like, why would be, why would they be I nice mean, to this kid and not so mean to that kid? Insane. I mean, it's like it goes to eleven, yeah. so you might, you can't have an extra kid in there that they're taking care of. And here's the other thing. Now I, I understand why they did this because they wanted to focus the story a bit, but they took a lot of the stuff that the parents have going on in the show. The dad has a whole act one opener called Telly. Um, where he's singing to the audience about how great Telly is, and Michael is playing a ukulele, and he steps forward to play it, and he plays, like, a string. And, and the mom has this amazing song called Loud. And again, if you know Leslie Margarita, like, seeing her do this is just insane. So the mom is, like, wanting to dance in a dance competition. She's got this dance partner named Rodolfo. And it's really <laughs> great. He speaks with this, like, He's like, I'm Rodolfo, ciao. And then he drops it and he's like, oh, babe, what's going on here? You know, um, and she sings this great, hilarious song and it's all about being loud. So it kind of shows like how different Matilda is because for example, Matilda's big breakthrough song is called Quiet, so. You got to be <laughs> I understand why they did it, but I kind of miss, that's kind of a lot of the fun of the show is just how awful these parents are. Yeah. And then when she like gets her little, like kind of, when she sings naughty and like finds ways to get back at them, it works really well. But I get why they did it. It's kind of a little harsh and broad, I think for a film. Yeah, you can't like go halfway with child abuse, you know, when it's, when it's cartoonish yeah. child abuse or uh, their election of duty as parents. You have to go all the way with it. Yeah, so, but then on the other hand, you have the school where, you know, again, like throwing a kid by the pigtails <laughs> yeah, yeah. and right. um, pulling the kid's ears till they stretch. And then they add in this thing where Miss Honey, they bring her in earlier. In the show and in the book, she meets Miss Honey when she goes to the school. She's just going to school. The idea is like, you got to go to school now because you're five or six years old, now it's time to go to school. Um, it's not like she was homeschooled and the parents were negligent Was she like a way. genius to, at maths and all the other Yeah, literature Matilda, and stuff? That, so that's the whole point of Matilda is that her parents don't cultivate her intellect and so she does it on her own because she's smart enough. She's yeah. got so much um, intelligence uh, that she and genius that she has nowhere to put it and nowhere to no one to appreciate it that it ends up being telekinesis. So oh, right. so even though in the book she's just going to school, she's already done all this work. She's already all done she's all this already reading. There. She's okay. already read a million books wow. and um and she does love the library and she goes to the library and um Cool. And in the movie, which I thought was cool and a neat way to kind of mix up the locations, instead of going her going to the library, she goes to um, the woman who has like Ooh, the, the bookmobile. Very clever. Hey, very clever bookmobiles. Device. We got you love it. <laughs> I finally realized why they invented bookmobile. <laughs> Did you ever have a bookmobile come to nah, your school? Man, we never. Had that no was bookmobiles. before your time. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> oh, we had the, you know, those scholastic book fairs, no? No. Were you, oh, were you yeah, yeah, we had those. Well, yeah. I was in England, but we had those, but they didn't come in a That's the other thing. I, I'm pretty sure this movie, they don't make it super explicit, but I'm pretty sure it's supposed to take place in a pre-cellular wor world. Oh, sure. It's supposed yeah. to be maybe the 90s or 80s, like yeah. when the book came out. The old um, days. So, so, yeah, I, I felt like the beginning, I was kind of like, oh, all right, all right, there's some stuff. I I, I really kind of didn't like Miracle or how they did it. Yeah. Even though the babies were cute, that was cute. But I like it. Um, Naughty was cute. I always liked that song. That's such a great song. Um, I just, you know, in a world of, like, tomorrows and where is love, like, give me a revenge child song Fits all the right time. I love it. Just a little bit naughty. It's so yeah. cute. Uh, it's um, such a fun way to, like, to give them character too to like sort of yeah. show their all that like passion and anger and shit you know? yeah and then um but when they got to the school i felt like things kind of picked up which is kind of i, I think what the film was going for um because they spent yeah. a lot of time there and they spent a lot of time with the kids which is you know the kids are the best part right, we don't tell emma thompson you said that
<laughs> so in the stage version, the role is always played, the character is a woman, but the role is always played by a man um, in drag, essentially. And um, the Matilda Jr., which I'm doing, they kind of say cast it however you want. So I kind of, I double cast it and I have. She should play the role. <laughs> no, <laughs> but no, I'd be Mrs. Wormwood. Come on, you gotta be loud. <laughs> so it was kind of interesting to see this version, which has, you know, a, w a woman playing the Trunchbull, mm -hmm. but obviously one of the great. Yeah. Not just character actors. She's one of the great actors. I don't know. She's even, she's like more than an actor. I don't know what yeah. she is, but it's not, it's different from an actor. It was she's so fun to see. She does these crazy yeah. characters. Well, and she's so, it's, she, she's so like lovely. Like I always love seeing Emma Thompson and <laughs> she, she plays lovely characters all the time. And so it's kind of neat to see her playing just an unrepentant, God, she loves mean, that. She evil must bully. Love it. Yeah. And, I mean, the fake British teeth. There were, there were, there were some British fake, oh, okay, so this was a, this was another kind of thing, issue I had. I feel like this isn't that bad. Um, there are some shots and some moments that looked really good, but there were mm. some times where I was like, ooh, I can see the budget. Um, mm. I could see Emma Thompson's fake nose. They put Bruce in this horrible fat suit, which felt a little unnecessary um, for that character. I, I feel like we should be past that, but you know, whatever. That's Why couldn't kid, you just get a bigger kid to play that part? The kid who ate the, the yeah. Cake? I mean, the kid was great, but like when he was doing his like revolting children dance, or you know, he just had like he looked like he had just like a pillow under that, his shirt. I thought that was him. Um, I thought that was really him. that was definitely not. And there were a few like kind of CGI moments where I was like, okay, but they weren't a deal breaker, um, no. not at all. Um, you know, I think they were working with what they had. They they narrowed down the the score a lot. I'm looking kind of at the list of songs and, um, you know, they cut basically everything that the parents do singing wise. Oh, thank God. I did not need more of them. <laughs> I was like very happy once we moved on from them. Ugh, and you have you have no not, joy in your life. No, no, I, 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 I got it. I got awful. the point. I got the point that they're awful. I, it's just it's not that they're awful. It's just that it's boring. Well, you keep going back to it. No, I, I, I think it's a lot of fun in the stage show. <laughs> Miss Honey usually has this song called um, This Little Girl, and she has a song called Pathetic, and they cut both of those. But they added, because it's a movie musical and you have to add a new song so you can get that best new song Oscar, Oscar um, they added a song at the end called Still Holding My Hand. Ugh. So it was fine. It was Man. fine. It was a cute, kind of a cute little duet. It kind of shows how they fix up the school, but it was kind of unnecessary. Yeah, I, I thought the kids were really cute. All of the kids were just adorable. In the stage show, the song uh, When I Grow Up kind of starts around the beginning of the second act. And there's this really amazing thing where the kids are on these swings and then they're swinging the swings kind of over the audience and it's mm. like really sweet but um i gotta say the movie version like really affected me i thought it was really cute the kids were kind of imagining what they would do when they grow up and then they were seeing themselves like driving the bus and driving a motorcycle and flying planes and i thought that was really cute what were some musical numbers you liked uh, I love Revolting Children. Um, That's a banger. That, and so I, she, they'd actually released that song earlier, I guess, oh, you showed me. Yeah, you, if you're watching this, you already know it was trending on TikTok yeah. like crazy doing the dance. That, I was kind of expecting that to, for, to be the be opener yeah. or something like that to Oh, be no, the it's the, yeah. And obviously then I realized that's what they're building towards, yeah. which was cool. And I, was, the kids parkouring off of the, <laughs> off of the lockers. <laughs> Cut in the office parkouring. So. Parkour! Parkour! No, but I felt like, you know, at the beginning they set up the, that whatever the song is with the alphabet. That was pretty School cool. School song. I, I love I, that, that one's pretty song. Cool. But I, it sets up like the older kids and they're like, we're going to be here. And then they're just not there at all. We never see them again until the end. That's the other thing. I mean, in the stage, well, the big kids in the stage version are kind of like the ensemble adults yeah. who have to who have to kind of 
They have to move the set around. No, 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 no. 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 They, they, it's the, the actual kids in the show are playing like the little kids, and yeah. there's a lot more named ones in the stage show. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and so they have to have kind of the more adults in the ensemble playing the big kids, but they yeah. kind of young them down a little totally. bit. But there's a cool part where they're kind of crawl. The, the set in on, in the stage version has like letters all over it. Yeah. Um, and so when yeah, they so. when they do the school song, they sing it first, and you're like, those are some weird lyrics, and like those are some. You're oh. like, I'm trying to figure out what's going on and then they actually show you and they kind of build the that's letters cool. around the stage yeah, and then you're like clever. oh yeah this I show really, is I really like that little trick in the lyrics that he, that he pulled um, yeah. the lyrics are very good the music is good it's a, for the most part um, and again I don't know the show but the, I've heard you've pl- played other songs for me for me in the show it's a good score it's a very hard score um, there's a lot of weird meter changes obviously Revolting Children goes into like 7-8 um, yeah. Interesting shit. Yeah, like, it's good. It's good stuff. So even though sometimes it, it, you know it might not be the most melodic or memorable songs, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, the work, just the work itself, the score. I, I wasn't crazy about that last song. You know that new song. Yeah, the new one. Um, yeah, it was a they, they just needed it. Usually, it ends with the the parents being like, "You want to stay with her?" And then she's like, "Yes." And then it's like, kind oh, of right. Well, right. yeah. And then it's like. And then they lived happily ever after. And then it's that you don't need the whole Miss Honey fixes up the school thing. But this movie did take advantage when it could of the medium and doing yeah. kind of more interesting things. The ending of the book, uh, the stage version and the 96 film, the big comeuppance is is that famous chalk writing, you know, I will get you just like you got me. Um, and the trunch bowl just runs away. And then that's it. And then that yeah. leads to revolting children. This turned into a big chain monster that looked like the escapologist the that Matilda monster. created. And then she gave the Trunchbull pigtails yeah. and flung her out. She did all this stuff. And so I thought that yeah. was cool, utilizing Something, yeah, the medium. Pretty much, that's so much harder to do on stage than in You can't, no. you can't, obviously. <laughs> have a, have a, an invisible person like fling somebody around with you. No. It, it, was was like, cool. it was like, it was like the begin, at the end of the Annie film where they're crawling up on a big like yeah, uh, yeah, drawbridge or yeah. something. Or, I don't know. When I was a kid, I thought it was. it was like a ro- like a, a um, like a roller coaster track or some shit, but obviously it, it wasn't that. You know, I feel like I feel like there's some Lionel Bart in there. You know, it's it's a very British, very British musical. Yeah, you got to have the British like school. You got to have the uniforms. Um, you got to have the kids with those you know really really in your face British accents, and you have to say maths. Maths. We're talking about maths mm-hmm. because it's not mathematic. It's mathematics. So the Americans, for some reason, we say math. We're shortening mathematics to math. We, but yeah. The reason why they say maths is because mathematics is plural. Just wanted to get that in there. <laughs> what do you think of Lashana Lynch as Miss Honey? I liked her. What a good performer. <laughs> yeah. She, <laughs> she was no, good. I, yeah, she was good. She she really brought a lot to that character. I think the last time I saw her in something was in... She was in Captain Marvel, remember? Oh, she yeah. was She was Maria Rambo, And yeah. then in Spider-Man No Way Home... She Maria Rambo is Captain Marvel. Yeah. So. So it's really cool to see her in a musical, and like yeah. you know, she really like I, you could see why they cast her. She's got the pipes. Yeah, I thought she did a good job. She she was she had a really pretty voice. They got rid of kind of some of the higher stuff that that Miss Honey sings, but um, I thought she sang beautifully. So. Yeah. I she's liked really her. The songs well. And she and Matilda had really sweet little chemistry. They were very sweet. Well, I did really like the parallel stories from what the story that Matilda was telling and then having it be her oh, yes. tie-in. And you were mentioning that that is not in the book. That was a, a, a plot device that they started using in the music. Yeah, the escapologist the and the acrobat story. That, um, Yeah, that's not in the book or the 96 film. Um, I do remember when seeing it on Broadway, I was like, what yeah, is this? Yeah, you must this? have been, yeah. That I really was like, what? is the purpose of this. It's a huge devo- like, and departure. And it took me, it takes you a while. Yeah. And I kept, you know, the, she keeps going back to the library and talking to Miss Phelps and, you know, telling yeah. her the story. And um, it, it really isn't until the second act where it was kind of like, oh, oh, yeah. oh, she's getting it in her brain because she's got magic powers. She's got telekinesis. So. That's so cool. Like, I really like that little, that element of the story. Yeah. Um, and I was really interested in it even... I mean, it, it, I wasn't thinking ahead to some kind of payoff. I was just interested in the story she was telling. And that w- it was kind of a testament to her, like, 
doing a good job with those scenes. And that was another good use of the medium of film. You know, um, you were Yeah, I was to... like, where is she going with this? I was kind of yeah. like with Miss Phelps. I was thinking, oh, she's just making something up. Yeah. And I didn't I didn't know where the payoff was going to come, but I thought the payoff was, was pretty good. Yeah, weird. it's a cool kind of theatrical device to kind of stretch it out. Because, again, you yeah. have this little book, which is a... Yeah. Uh, you know, essentially like a children's book. You know, it's a rolled doll book. You could finish it in one sitting. Yeah. Um, and so to flesh it out to like a two-hour musical, um, it's like a, kind of a cool device and um, has a good payoff. And, but I like that they took that risk that the writers of the book or whoever gave them the authority to do that, you know, if you're, if you're adapting, you're adapting. And yeah. I thought that was really bold. I mean, we've seen so many adaptations of movies or, film, or films or books into musicals that really don't do that. They kind of just stay where... The yeah. book is they kind of said we're making something new as well which yeah. i appreciate that it tim minchin wrote the music and the lyrics and the book was written the book of the musical was written by dennis kelly so who wrote the screenplay i remember screenplay that. also by dennis kelly there you go see that's where it's at if you write the book you should be able to write the screenplay because then you can make all the changes that you wanted to make that you couldn't because it was on stage now you have the freedom it worked out really well and um most of the songs were pretty much how they are on the stage show. I think they just added in a couple lines to Revolting Children just to like make it build a little bit. Um, but other than that, it was pretty faithful. I mean, it's such a fun show. It's kind of like... Like the orphans, like the little orphans singing Food Glorious Food or like um, I Do Anything or like in Annie when they're doing You're Never Fully Dressed Without a Smile and they're doing that little kick line or when they're doing Hard Knock Life. Yeah, when they're like, like those surefire watching little spunky musical theater kids like go all yeah. out. Like chock a block. Like that's all Matilda is. Like revolting children, you're going nuts. Um, the school song, you're going nuts. When I grow up, that's when I get really emotional, especially when Miss Honey has her verse at the oh, end, yeah, and yeah. then and then Matilda comes in with her little kind of verse that kind of they go together. It just works so well. I mean, you got a lot of good ideas here combined into one, and like pushed and pressed into a really cool pe work of art. You know? Yeah, and then they made a really nice, a really good movie based on it. You know. Yeah. I mean, you could pick it apart. You can find things that you don't like about the story, but overall, like. Yeah, I just Good wish job. Miracle was done differently. That's mm. kind of my biggest gripe because mm. the stage version is just so funny to me and mm. it just like gets the audience so hyped um, for what you're about to see. I feel like the movie kind of was like, we really want to do something different. Um, yeah, that, that was a weird choice. Yeah, I, I, I didn't that love one. it. That's really the only one that I didn't really care for the there were other changes made where I kind of was like eh, I, don't know, I get it but like the yeah the opening I didn't love um and again like all the kids in it are so good um not just the kid kid playing Matilda um Lavender with her little newt and Bruce and um Eric who was like trying to move some of his mind yeah. and then Nigel who like the the thing on the board was stressing him out and uh, and they had, they had oh, the, Hortensia, the, the bad girl with her beret who like stole the whole movie. She was the big kid. Yeah, um, she did I, still I, yeah I, I thought all the kids were so good. They really found some amazing kids. And and they like dance their asses yeah. off. They're so good. Well, it's like you said, this it's not hard to find kids like that in the in performing arts in London. They're all over the place. And like yeah. I'm glad that they I'm glad that they took advantage of that. I was wondering if they filmed it there. Let me see. They had to. Have. Yeah, I think so. There were times where they were walking around, like in the in the woods on the little path to school, where I was like, "This could be California." Really? Because I well, there was. I, I'm sure it was. Sure it, was it wasn't. They but... show the countryside with the hedgerows and like the the gray skies, and it's kind of drizzly. I'm like, I'm home. Yeah. I miss yeah. the little island. No. So like what? Okay, so how many Roald Dahl film adaptations have there been now at this point? Like Matilda's been done twice, and how many of them have become musicals? Because like. James and the Giant Peach is essentially a musical. Yeah. Um, I think they all did. And then, you know, Willy Wonka slash Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. The BFG became a movie, but it kind of flopped. Yeah, it wasn't. That oh, was The Witches. Story. The Witches the has witches. been done twice. Yeah. I love the original Witches. But yeah, I, you know, it's been interesting for me because I really grew up in a, you know, I was, I had a pre Harry Potter childhood. I read Harry Potter books when I was like. <laughs> I think I was, 40. I no, I was a senior in high school. Um, uh, so my books growing up when I was like four or five, six, um, those books 
that eventually, like, when you get in from, like, lunch and you're, you're all winding down, your teacher goes, okay, we're going to read another chapter from this. Yeah. They were always rolled doll books. And so Matilda, because it came out in my actual childhood and I was around her age, like, everyone was reading that book. And so it's so interesting to me that people are like, what? This is an adaptation of the 96 film? I'm like, ugh! <laughs> yeah, nobody's... That's outrageous that people make that mistake. They clearly didn't grow up the intellectual giant. That that's no, that's people. not what it is. It's, yeah. I, 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 I wondered this. I kind of asked this on Twitter because, like, is it just that? I, I know that Roald Dahl is very big still in the UK, but I wonder if he got some of some of his works kind of got phased out just like yeah. in the in the American classroom. I don't know. I don't know. It's just interesting. You asked me if I'd seen it when I was growing up, and obviously by '88, I was too old for it. I thought it was yeah. written earlier than that. I thought it was written in the early 80s. No, it was but, his, he died like not long after yeah. it. And I think my copy was from like 1990 or something <clears throat> like that. Like I still have yeah. it. It's in my classroom right now. Um, <laughs> yes. Because I wanted to show it to the kids. The yeah. Oh, I think it's a really great show. I remember seeing it on Broadway and not even being finished with it. And I was like, this is going to be the new Annie or Oliver. Like this is going to be... This is gonna do gangbusters in educational theater, which of course it is. Um, and like every kid is gonna to wanna to play this part. Like all Broadway musicals and West End musicals, they had, you know, like three or four different girls playing Matilda. Oh. Because okay. you have to. Yeah. You're gonna direct this show. Yeah. <laughs> the junior version. The junior version. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I guess there'll be some things that are different. But. Yeah, you know what? Some of the cuts they made to the film are not unlike what the junior version does. The junior version cuts out a lot of the parents singing stuff. Mm. Um, and But Michael, the brother, is still there. Um, and it cuts out a couple things, but there are some songs in Matilda Jr. that, um, that the film mm. didn't do. So. Uh, yeah, so overall, what do you think? I, I, I think it's a really mm. good movie musical. Yeah, and the, the main things that you mentioned, uh, there are things that I wish were different, you know, in this version. But overall, yeah, I did like it. I, I think kids will have fun with it. Yeah. I mean, if if anything, it'll get them excited about doing a show. Like your kids will. I mean, it's, well, it's, it's so it's, cool when those things align. You know. Yeah. You're about to do a show that just came out as a movie. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It. I, I try. I try to time these things if I can. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Um, it, it helps not, me narrow down the choice. But um, <laughs> I. Yeah. I. And this is for kids. Like, let's not get us get. Yeah. This is for children. Exactly. So uh, I can definitely see why they focus things and. Um, Kind such of made it the way they did. Broad strokes, you know, such such characters that are so one-sided, one or the other. You know, that's the way children's stories are in a lot of ways. Archetypes that, that tell us a morality tale. I don't know how much of a morality tale this one is, but you well, know, you learn more about yourself. I think the yourself. moral is that um, you shouldn't be a bully, um, that you should cultivate knowledge, mm -hmm. um, and sometimes your actual relatives and blood family are <laughs> crap. Yeah. So don't <laughs> sometimes it's sometimes they don't matter yeah. and you can go to your found family and be much happier yeah. and more fulfilled. So you can trust yourself and trust your your inner power and your inner energy yeah. to you, like carry you, you through. You have the power to say no mom and dad right. um and you, you don't suck. Have to, you don't have to be miserable your whole <laughs> life just because they were or be, you don't have to stay in abusive situations yeah. because they're abusing you. Um, and I think that was a good good on you, Roald Dahl. That guy, you know. Anti-Semitism aside, that was a good message. We can't have nice things. Every author, every author, they're the worst. We came from a past <laughs> that is pretty deplorable. That is, we came from a we came from a now that is pretty. <laughs> Every everyone's hero will eventually you'll find out who yep. they truly were. Yep. But not I, not anymore. I, From here forward, it's gonna. Not be me though. I'm not a bastard. <laughs> Maybe uh, I am. All right. Love so love uh, Matilda the musical, we we recommend. Check it out on Netflix. Yeah. Great for the family. Great if you've got like a musical theater kid or like a spunky smart girl, a bookish kid. Um, yeah, really good, like, stylized, as I mentioned, the art direction and the cinematography is fun. You know, they're, they're, it's going to sweep you up into another world for an hour or so. It's a beautiful land called Great, United Kingdom. Great skies and rain <laughs> Great swept. Britain, whatever you guys want to call it. Yeah, salt and vinegar crisps and stinging nettles. Yeah. Watch out for the stinging Aluminium. nettles. Aluminium. 
So um, they were a little bit naughty. Yeah, naughty. All right, so uh, check it out and, uh, you know, follow us on all the things. Yeah, we miss you guys. And hopefully, Thanks for watching. hopefully we'll have more stuff yeah. coming to you uh, in 2023. Yes. All right. Happy New Year once more. Oh, wait, she's facing the other way. Oh. <laughs>